بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the name of Allah the most gracious the most merciful السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن والاه We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we thank him upon all conditions we send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam his entire household all his companions may Allah bless them all and bless every single one of us amen My brothers and sisters we take for granted sometimes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the one who made us the one who created us the one who is in absolute control of every aspect of existence has sent to us a word of his own he has spoken to us he has sent a message in his own words this is by far the most powerful speech we will ever witness the speech of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is known as kalamullah the word of allah the speech of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we have it in our midst but we sometimes take it for granted it is important for us to realize that even to touch the mushaf or what we would term the quran from which we read the words of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we would need to be upon a certain level of purity and at the same time when we are reading this word allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it quite clear that he will be rewarding us for every letter because it is a repetition of what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself has spoken so he rewards us per letter each letter 10 rewards not a sentence not a paragraph not a surah or not a chapter out of 30 chapters but rather every single letter we receive rewards we receive goodness we receive the mercy of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala each one of those letters is known as the remembrance of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is known as a dhikr and the term dhikr is used in the quran to refer to the quran itself so this is why the best form of remembrance of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the recitation of this noble quran and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it clear that it is his duty to protect the revelation it is his word he will look after it and he has put in place many rules and regulations that would make us part and parcel of those who've also contributed to the protection of the book earning a reward by doing that for example when we memorize the quran it is indeed an act of merit but at the same time for every letter we will be receiving 10 rewards when i want to memorize i have to repeat the same words so many times only allah knows how many rewards i have accumulated at the same time allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says inna nahnu nazzalna dhikra wa inna lahu lahafizun indeed we have revealed a dhikr a dhikr here referring to the quran we have revealed this remembrance this quran and we will ensure that we protect it hence anyone who has memorized the quran or attempted to memorize it allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect that person as a result it's a secondary protection the primary protection is the protection of the book of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but because you made an effort to memorize it by default you now need to be protected you become a vip you become a person unlike the others even though shaitan may keep trying with you but there is always a nucleus in you that is built upon the word of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so this is why you find where we say this person is a hafiz this person has memorized the quran this person is trying to memorize the quran generally it should reflect in the attitude of the person shaitan comes as i've said and tries to change this but every time we turn back to allah we become from among those again who are loved by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so if a person makes an effort to learn the quran he will automatically be protected by allah if you want the protection of allah a special type of protection 
make an effort to memorize the Quran. Here Allah promised you. He says, I will look after, I will protect. So if you have made an effort to memorize, you are part of that whole protocol. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has also dictated to us through the blessed lips of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that when we fulfill the five daily prayers known as salah, it has to be in the Arabic language and there has to be in that salah, in every unit of that prayer, words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His Quran, His words. We have to read them. You know Surah Al-Fatiha and you know several other surahs. Little chapters of the Quran, minimum we need to memorize in order that every single one of us can be part of the Ummah known as Ummatul Quran, the Ummah of the Quran. This having been said, let's not confuse ourselves by believing that it's only the Quran that Allah has revealed. No, previously He has revealed other scriptures, correct. But for us, the Quran and together with it, it will lead us to the entire lifestyle of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There are people today who promote a wrong belief saying that this is the Quran, that's it, I adopt it, whatever's in it is in it, whatever is not in it, that's it, it's okay, I don't want it. In fact, if you were to adopt the Quran correctly, it leads you to the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It leads you to the details of all the rules and regulations that are within it. Those details are not found anywhere else but in the statements and the lifestyle of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So there is a challenge that Allah has placed forth. What is this challenge? The challenge is from many angles. The first part of it is nobody can ever come with a Quran or a book similar to the Quran, no matter how much they helped each other or assist each other. Listen to what Allah says. Say, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if all of jinn kind and all of mankind had to get together in order to try and come up with a book similar to the Quran, something similar to the Quran, they will never ever be able to come up with it, even if they all helped each other to achieve the goal. That's a challenge. So people tried. Do you know there were people at the time of Muhammad sallallahu who tried to come up with verses, but the irony is every time they came up with something, it made everyone laugh. It was something like a joke. May Allah forgive us, protect us all. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us, keep us upon the straight path. I mean, so Allah says, okay, we have another challenge for you. That might be too much. We have another one. Are they saying that he fabricated it? Because they accused Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa of fabricating the Quran. Allah says, قُلْ فَأْتُوا بِعَشْرِ سُوَرٍ مِثْلِهِ مفتريات وادعوا من استطعتم من دون الله إن كنتم صادقين. If you think he has fabricated it, we want you to come up not with the entire Quran, only ten surahs similar to it. And you can call whomsoever you are calling out to besides Allah if you are truthful. Bring it, let's see. They could not come up with that either. So the challenge dropped from being the entire Quran, trying to replicate it, to coming down to 10, just 10 surahs, 10 little chapters, the smallest of them. They couldn't. The one man tried to, Musaylam al kadhab one of the liars, and a few others have also tried to come up with words similar to the Quran. Like I said, people began to laugh. When Allah speaks of the final day and the hour and the loud bang and the noise, what powerful verses they bring about tears in our eyes, a trembling that we feel in our bodies when Allah speaks of the final moments, 
the end of the world, how it will be destroyed, the sound and so on. This man comes up and he had nothing more to say than his amusement by the elephant. He says, Al-feelu, mal-feelu, wa ma adaraka mal-feelu. You see the elephant, do you know that elephant and do you know what about that elephant? What's that got to do with revelation? What lesson do you have in it? They scoffed and they laughed, subhanallah. So Allah says, Okay, you cannot even come up with 10. We have another challenge for you. What is the challenge? Am yaquluna iftara? Qul fa'tu bi suratin min mithlih. They have saying that they are saying that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fabricated this on his own. He came up with it on his own as a human being. They are saying he brought it. Allah says, "Okay, come up with even one surah." So initially it was the entire Quran. Then it came down to 10 because they didn't manage that. Now it came down to one, one surah, just one. And you know what? They tried, they tried hard. Like I said, they were unsuccessful. So Allah says, okay, we have the final challenge for you. Do you know what it is? Allah says, فَلْيَأْتُوا بِحَدِيثٍ مِثْلِهِ إِن كَانُوا صَادِقِينَ Come up with any speech that sounds like it if you are truthful. We are not worried about one surah anymore. Speech that sounds like the Quran, that is full of meaning like the Quran. They didn't, they couldn't, they wouldn't, they won't. Challenge from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. This is the word of Allah. He has made it easy for us to understand, to learn, to put into practice, to memorize, and then he challenges us or he asks us a question much simpler. This question that I'm about to make mention of in the Quran, in Surah Al-Qamar, Allah is addressing the believers. We have made this Quran very easy for something known as a dhikr So is there anyone who is going to engage in that? What is meant by a dhikr a dhikr primarily is referring to understanding, memorizing. Some of the scholars include putting into do practice as well as learning or improving its recitation and so on. So we put into practice, we've understood it. Allah says we've made it easy to understand. It's not difficult to understand. There are three types of verses in the Quran. One, the majority of the verses. Most of us would be able to understand, like the stories of the prophets and so many other verses of the Quran, quite simple. To draw lessons from them requires someone who studied a little, a little bit deeper. So you have the second type of verses, those which may not be understood by the layman, but they will be understood by those who've gone deeper into the knowledge of interpretation and into the words of Muhammad sallallahu interpretation of those verses. These are the verses where rules and regulations are made mention of. You might not understand it immediately when you read it. So our duty is like Allah says, you ask those with knowledge if you don't know. Ask those with knowledge. Go and learn. Make an effort to learn the Quran. It is the key to your paradise. This is what it is. Because the hadith says, Al Quran hujjatu laka aw alayk. This Quran will either bear witness for you or against you. Every single one of you. The Quran will come on the day of judgment. It will speak. It will bear witness for you or against you. If you did not make an effort to learn it, to understand it, to put it into practice, to improve your recitation, to convey it to others, then it will bear witness against you. But if you tried your best and you knew it's halal and it's haram and you considered it's halal as halal and wherever you faulted you sought Allah's forgiveness and the haram you considered it haram and wherever you faulted you sought Allah's forgiveness you tried your best you tried to memorize to learn then indeed the Quran will come and bear witness for you may Allah make us from among those whom the Quran bears witness for so Allah says we've made this Quran easy to understand the third type of verses are those nobody knows the meaning of. You have to just leave it for Allah. Why did Allah do that? He wants to show you that وَفَوْقَ كُلِّ ذِي عِلْمٍ عَلِيمٍ Above everyone with knowledge is the one with sound knowledge. One with sound knowledge. The hierarchy of knowledge 
it continues to go up until it ends with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is the knower. And you know what he tells us? وَمَا أُوتِيتُمْ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا We have not given you from knowledge except very little. What you know is a droplet compared to what Allah knows. Not even a droplet, subhanallah. Compared to what Allah knows. Allah has the knowledge of absolutely everything. We only have a little bit of knowledge connected to a certain type of life. Known as the life in this world, which is a little planet that we've been placed on. One of the smallest to be honest with you. Allah's knowledge is vast. So Allah says certain verses we leave for us. The day you come to us, we may choose to let you know. What are these verses? For example, when we read, Hamim Qaf. What does it mean? Nobody can tell you I know what it means. Even Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam left it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He left it. He did not tell us. He didn't inform us. It is something Allah has left in his knowledge. So these are the three types of verses. But the challenge is, are you going to make an effort to understand the Quran, to understand the rules and regulations? Are you going to make an effort to, to sit in lessons of tafsir in your masjid or the scholars that have actually made an effort to arrange programs and lectures and lessons, even if you'd like to join a school, even if it is an online school, something legitimate, authentic, that the scholars approve of. Have you made an effort to learn the word of Allah? That's a challenge. Allah says, we have made this Quran easy to understand. Is anyone from amongst you going to do that? It's a question. A question is a challenge. It's like when Allah speaks about humankind and he says, we have created man in the best of postures. The fact that Allah says this is the best, it's a challenge to say there's nothing better. Nobody can come up with anything better. This is why if you take a look at the robots that are being created today, they, are, they say they've arrived at a peak. Perhaps they might go beyond that because a peak meaning for our time, you will find they have something that looks like legs, something that looks like hands, something that looks like a face. Why did they come up with it? Because they know that's the best posture. <laughs> they can't come up with anything better. When Allah says, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمٍ We have indeed created man in the best of postures. It means where your fingers are, there could be no better way of placing them. Where your eyes, your nose, your mouth, your lips, whatever else, your tongue, your ears, your lobes, whatever else it is, your hair. May Allah forgive us. May Allah grant us goodness in our hair. I mean, there could be no better place. Nothing. It's a challenge. Similarly, Allah is challenging us when He says, I have made it easy for you to understand. You're definitely going to be questioned. Did you try to understand the word of Allah? And did you try to read it? Did you try to improve your recitation? The Quran is the only book on earth, the only book on earth that to improve the recitation of it, even without understanding it, will get you reward upon reward for every single letter. Subhanallah. So if I've been reading Surah Al-Fatiha, the beauty of it is I will never ever arrive at perfection. That's something you need to know. No matter who you are, how powerful a language you might be speaking in terms of Arabic or anything else, you will never arrive at absolute perfection. Perfection is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But you can aim, you should be aiming up at perfection. And at the same time, you will get somewhere by the will of Allah. But if we don't make an effort, what do we expect? If we are people who do not make an effort to improve our recitation, what do we expect? My brothers and sisters, the challenge that I am placing regarding the Quran today, and we've heard already quite a bit, but the one, to make an effort to understand the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And two, to make an effort to improve the quality of recitation. And a third challenge I want to place upon the shoulders of one and all to improve the amount you've memorized subhanallah improve it there are a lot of us here perhaps who have already memorized certain chapters of the quran wallahi consolidate improve your recitation read in a melodious tune read to show off to allah no one else 
We should be reading to show off to Allah. He will tell us on the day of judgment to read the Quran. If you have memorized it, he will say, read. Just like you used to read in the world on earth and keep on going up because your final status will be upon the verse you will get stuck. How do you get stuck? So the ulama have explained that there are two ways of getting stuck. But the primary way of getting stuck is when you have read a verse that you did not practice upon, you get stuck. May Allah forgive us. So if you're reading, وَأَقِيمُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَآتُوا الزَّكَاةَ And remember, that's right at the beginning of the Qur'an. وَرْكَعُوا مَعَ الرَّاكِعِينَ You know, fulfill your salah, establish your zakah. It's right at the beginning of the Qur'an. No one wants to say, right, I've memorized the Qur'an. You start, you know, like a Ferrari reciting. And next thing you know, Aqimus salah comes. You haven't been reading your salah throughout your life and you get stuck. You don't know what it is. And people say, but in the dunya, you used to be one of those who never made mistakes. That's because mistakes of the hereafter are not necessarily connected to your memory. Because memory is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even the most powerful from amongst us in memory can make a blunder once in a while. But at the same time, it's connected to did you practice upon it or not? That's the question. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to strengthen us, to grant us the ability to put into practice the verses of the Quran. So as I was saying, a person who is a hafiz, my brothers and sisters consolidate the Quran. And if memorization of the Quran is not only for the males, it is for the females as well. There is a misnotion among people to say it's more important for the men to memorize the Quran because they have to lead Salat al Taraweeh. That's not the purpose of memorization of the Quran. That's only, by the way, you are a Hafid. We need this recitation of the Quran. Please may you lead us in Salah. If you've never led Salat al Taraweeh in your life and you're a Hafid, it doesn't make you any weaker. Yes, it is encouraged and I, we, we shouldn't get that wrong. But at the same time, let us understand the instruction is not just for the males, it's for the females as well. How many of us can encourage our daughters, our sisters, our mothers and so on to memorize the Quran? My brothers and sisters, increase it in memory. Let me try and put you into a picture. When you love someone and you love them dearly, you will make sure you're affiliated to them in more than one way. You know a lot about them. You will make sure they are happy with you. If they have work that they have done, you will be able to say, you know what? I heard you say this and I've memorized this and I know this from your book or from your word or whatever else it is. And you will be smiling when they are happy. Imagine the link with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We say, I love you, oh Allah. But you've never made an effort to look at his word. Where's the love? I love you, oh Allah. But Allah says so many things in the Quran and you're leading a life heading in another direction. May Allah forgive us. So this is why we say, if you want to say, I love you, oh Allah, make a bit of an effort to learn his word, to understand it. And that's the challenge by the will of Allah. You, if that's the true love. You want to show the love that you have for Allah. Well, it lies within the Quran. The Quran leads you to the sunnah and so on. You need to practice. A Muslim's life is not only enlightened on a Friday. It's supposed to be five times a day. Sometimes we only see the masjid once a week. And some of the less fortunate only see it on the day of Eid. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us steadfastness. So my brothers and sisters, here we have heard so many of these challenges. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has indeed told us very clearly that, uh, that He will reward those. He will recompense with goodness those who try, those who strive. People become depressed sometimes when they start thinking, that you know what, there's a lot of improvement I need in my life. I will start soon. I will start soon. Soon is the word that the devil entraps us with. The minute I say, inshallah, next week, or oh, I'm going to go for hajj, and inshallah, when I come back, my life will have changed. Too late. Who knows, you might never make it there. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take our hujjaj safely and bring them back as well. You might never make it there. People are passing away. Last night we heard of someone passing away. May Allah grant them jannah. Sudden car crash. We hear that every day. It can happen to you, it can happen to me. Don't ever say, I will turn soon, turn now. May Allah forgive us. Ya Allah, we promise you our life changes here and now. Amen. Amen. This is the word of Allah. What link do you want to have with the word of your maker? The one who made you. If you look into the mirror and you are obsessed with yourself, you know, we take so much of time to make sure that just the face is okay in front of the mirror. We are happy when we look okay. We are sad when there is a pimple sticking out somewhere and we don't even want to go into public in the case of the women. But to be honest with you, look at how excited we get 
looking at the creation of Allah. Where's your link with the one who made that? Subhanallah, the one who gave you what you're just busy looking at and smiling about. Where's your link with the one who made that? Al Khaliq, there's no comparison. This is why the gift, the cherry on the cake, we can't even call it a cherry on the cake because although that is terminology used in the English language to depict the highlight or the epic, we must say when you meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Himself, that will be the final moment. Subhanallah, meaning that's the height of absolutely everything. Meeting with Allah. Today you get excited to meet a human being, someone you love, you care for, someone who's dear to your heart, you get so happy. What about Allah? But you need to develop a link with Allah. That link is through the Quran, through Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam sunnah. By following it and adopting it, you earn the love of Allah. And I end with the verse. Allah says, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهِ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورٌ رَّحِيمٌ O oh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, tell them, if you love Allah, then follow me. And Allah will love you and He will forgive your sins, for indeed, He is most forgiving, most merciful. Brothers and sisters, let's take heed. These are the words of Allah. Did you know the Quran has in it cure? Did you know the Quran has in it every form of soothing and calming, not only of the limbs and the organs, but the spirituality and the soul as well. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. May we be from amongst those who've understood the challenge that is for us. And may we excel in this regard in a beautiful way. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad.